The price of many fruit and vegetables is expected to rise in the UK when new post-Brexit import controls are brought in this week. So far, the UK has delayed border checks on goods arriving from Europe five times. Nearly half of what we eat comes from abroad. Nearly two-thirds of that comes from the EU. The French Produce Consortium has predicted that £200 million is going to be added to the cost of imports. Government sources have suggested it would be as little as 0.2% over three years. But let's go down the supermarket aisle and see which foods could be affected and ask ourselves the question, what's going up? What is going up? So head down the aisle for me and we'll first, there we are, we're going to the fruit and veg first because they were mentioned. And here's what's happening. DEFRA, that's our government, has unexpectedly reclassified EU fruit and veg as medium risk instead of low risk. So exporters will have to fill out extra paperwork and it's going to have to be signed by a health official. So that's going to go up. Back to the aisle. What next, madam? What do you want to see? Meat and cheese. OK, that's at the end. All right. So the cheese is there and the meat is there. And and again, there are issues with both both of these things that you see in the supermarket. If you're an EU exporter, things like chorizo, parma ham and cheese, you'll have to pay more. Here's the French guy. He exports camembert. He says, no more camembert for you. That's the worry that they can't face the extra import export costs. Also affects Irish beef, French lamb, bacon and ham imported from Denmark, Germany and the Netherlands. So it, it looks like it could be a bit of a horrible situation. Let's go back out to the aisle. One more thing for you. I want to see the supermarket flowers. Ah, yes, Ed Sheeran has a song called Supermarket Flowers. It's not about you, Ed, all right? So five types of, thank you. Five types of flower will now have to be checked in factories by a local inspector for that. A species of leaf mite that destroys foliage. So supermarket flowers have now got checks. And here we get to the very heart of it, Richard, doesn't it? Don't we? Which is that you recommended something to the country, namely Brexit, that is making everything more expensive. Look, the reality is Brexit was the right decision. It's a great opportunity that this government and these civil servants have been utterly incompetent about taking advantage of. And you've just said it in your introduction. We haven't had these checks before. We don't need to do these checks. We have what's called trust to trader status, and it's it's a complete nonsense. So we should just wave service. their food in, as we have. When, done but they to don't date. do that with our food. And, but, but as we have done to date, because you have you know who these traders are, you know who these vendors are. You've worked with them. They've they've gained their. But they're trust not doing that with status. our food. So so then we get into a terrible imbalance. But don't you don't we? need to. You can look. We know who these vendors are. You can trust them. We've trusted them today. The idea that suddenly strawberries tomorrow are going to be medium risk, whereas strawberries yesterday were low risk, is just ridiculous. But that's not this, I don't know, what it, do you think? The, but it's does this show Brexit, Brexit has totally failed? It does show that Brexit dis is not working for us. And no, we can't eat sovereignty or drink sovereignty. And, you know, you can, you can say what you want, but there was a research, um, really good research done by the LSE in 2021, and they found back then that uh, leaving the EU had added... £210 to household food bills. The poor proportionately were paying more, costing consumers a total of £5.8 billion. In 2021? 20, 2021. Yeah, this okay. is a the left-wing LSE, by the way. I was going to say, and, they could be and, Remainers. Sorry? They could be Remainers. Or Remainers. No, these are academics. Oh, academics come on, Yasmin. Do, oh, you know, this is, the, this is the nonsense that Brexiters do. We don't love the academics because they're biased. This is peer-reviewed, proper research, if you don't like it, it's because you don't want to hear some of the facts. Richard, the issue, sure. And you don't is, want is to we, think we, about what you did to us. We, we've the self-harm you caused us. Absolute nonsense. Because it's a democracy, and we believe in democracy, and we voted to leave. And people don't regret voting to leave. What they regret, and what this highlights... Oh, no. Is, what, There's what, a lot more no, regretting nonsense. it. What people, oh, what people are seeing on. from this is the incompetence of our civil service. But you and should that have priced actually, that in, right? You should have said, we're not going to recommend Brexit no, because it, we haven't got a civil service of democracy, that can deliver. It. It's, that's one of the reasons why the Tories are going to be voted out, because they've been so incompetent about taking it's, advantage this is, of this, this great... This is so ridiculous, still... Richard. This is so ridiculous. You got it wrong. You've done us damage. Now you're saying... We haven't oh, done us... no, hey, hang on. wait. He says wait, Brexit should wait. have worked. No, no. All you are doing, as lots of Brexiters like Anne Whittacombe are doing, Brexit is great. It's, it's they didn't do it right. It's like a car... I crash I, a car, I, it's through negligence, into somebody else's car. Hey, Yasmin. And then I say, he didn't look after his car properly. Yasmin, <laughs> which, it's ridiculous. Yasmin. It Richard. is ridiculous. Right, Richard, Yasmin, Yasmin, Richard. Which economy, Yasmin, has grown faster since 2016 and since 2020? Germany or England? 
uh, the UK? The answer is the UK. So no, actually, you've got to remember the EU is in recession. Germany is in recession. We've got no growth, mm. but we are doing better than those countries. But we so the idea that we'd be better within the right. EU is a nonsense. Hang on, Yasmin, just don't, don't, for a second. I love the idea that your, your decision not to argue with Richard has lasted three and a half minutes. Well, I thought I'd save it. <laughs> that's it, that's all. I was that's saving it. That's why I was it. so shocked at the beginning. OK, Broderick, <laughs> Broderick in London, hi. Hi, good morning. Is this, is this um, Richard's fault? Well, going by what things went on, I was... Uh, a, Bo a Boris man met for many years. Yeah. And 2011, I won an award from the mayor when he was mayor then for outstanding contribution to the Londoners because I helped raise £27,000 for the Royal British Legion. And I was a Boris man. Then w w when uh, he went in, done all what he said and this, that and the other. And then afterwards... He sort of like broke down and was mumbling and bumbling like the American um, pre uh, president. He, he couldn't get a whole sentence together without mumbling or bubbles or anything else. And I thought I'd done the wrong thing. Why did I vote for him? Well, so are you feeling now that because obviously Brexit was Boris Johnson in the driving seat, are you feeling you were led astray or not? Yes, I do. You know, honestly, now I've got no time for Boris. OK, Broderick, thank you. After the break, we'll take more calls on this. Now I'd love more of your calls on the warnings about potential food price rises due to Brexit. Richard, obviously, big Brexit backer, has said this is, this is civil servants who've done this. Christopher in Kent, is this, is this the, the government and the civil service messing up Brexit? Oh, good morning, everybody. Um, well, actually, I think what it is, is it's the civil service um, and uh, that, that sort of elite have actually tried to block uh, Brexit from the outset, and so they haven't been on board with it. But what I would like to say also is that, I mean, I always take a long-term view of these things, you see, around about sort of seven to ten years, um, I was thinking of. And um, I, uh, I don't want to be ruled by an unelected body in, in uh, Brussels for a start, but also I actually don't think the EU is going to be sustainable in the long term because it's taking on so many different countries with different um, uh, economies, and I don't think it's actually going to work. There's about eight countries, or ten countries possibly, um, that are, are queuing up to join in. I hear, um, I hear and you, I and I say, yeah, be I go, a problem. Of, of course, of course, and maybe Ukraine will join and everything else. However... You, even if you're being very negative about the EU, you could say it's a massive protectionist racket that basically won't allow anyone to import into it. But that's another reason to belong, isn't it? We need no, that I market. Think so. I think we need to be sustainable ourselves, be more self-sufficient in, our, in, in, our, in ourselves. But I think also what you've got to remember is that, you know, with freedom of movement, when you've got, when they're going to be taking on all these, um, uh, these countries, um, there'll be a massive uh, pressure on, on infrastructure in nations. And these, you know, hospitals and schools and everything don't just land like food parcels. Um, okay. You know, so uh, I don't think it's a sustainable model maybe, maybe um, it'll with crash. continued Thank you. expansion. Thank you, Christopher. Another Chris in Manchester. Hi. Hello, Chris. Morning. Um, I don't think I can add anything more to what my namesake just said. What, one of the issues, though, uh, and Richard couldn't agree with you more about proportional representation. Bring it on, please. But one of the things that... Um, was very apparent to me when Brexit, when we finally got over the line, the vast majority of the government were dead against it. Yeah. So, you know, you've got a constitution that, I mean, people obviously like Richard and Nigel Farage were the ones that, that really, I think, you know, uh, influenced the, the general public's mind. But, I yeah, voted. but we're discussing today that the price of food is going up because of these checks. Well, I'm, I'm coming on to that. Oh, um, please, yeah, please do. Well, the problem is, uh, I've just, there's just been, whilst I was waiting to, to come on um, on air, I've been watching GB News. And there's, there's people in Paris. Thanks a lot. Um, uh, farmers who've surrounded Paris, um, who, because they're striking for very similar things that our farmers are suffering. We're talking with. about them later, actually, yeah. So, so well, the yeah, I think I understand, but, but okay, except that it's not the same, is it, really? Because they're... They're striking over what the, the, the amount that they think they should be getting from the government. This, we're talking about customs checks here, Chris. Well, um, therefore, as Richard said, what was it? A bad strawberry? Sorry, a good strawberry becomes a bad strawberry or something. Well, yeah. 
How absolutely, utterly. They're just finding reasons, I believe. Well, that may be, yeah. That may, thank you, Chris. Kath in West Yorkshire, hi. What do you think? Well, well you go on. Since, since Brex, Brexit was done, whatever's gone wrong in this country, Brexit has been blamed for. Within months of Brexit, we had a pandemic. That did more harm than Brexit ever could, regardless of what Yasmin says. And I voted for Brexit last time. If there were another referendum, I'd vote for them this time. But I hope to God, if there is, it's not Rishi Sunak leading it. It needs somebody with a backbone. All right, Kath. And the only one I can think of is the guy that sat on your panel. Well, yeah, well, not, he's not in the Conservative Party, but he's getting some plaudits today. You're, you're, obviously, your well, arguments have fallen. I'm sorry, Yasmin. you're a minority. Mo a huge number of people who voted for Brexit now regret it. Is that true, though? It is. It is. It is absolutely true. Get your researchers to give I don't know. Yeah, it. I don't It was 63% the last time I read. It's going up. And it was the biggest... COVID, of course, caused a lot of damage, not just to us, the whole world. Mm. You can't compare a pandemic to a decision that was taken, thanks to guys like this, to, a, leave, in a, in a to, leave, to leave what was an extraordinary club for which our young people most benefited. And the young do not accept this was a good thing okay. we did. Nick in Devon, hi. Oh, hi, everyone. What do you think, Nick, about this? Is, it, this? is this the final straw for Brexit, that food prices are going up? Uh, well, I don't know if it's the final straw. I mean, I hope it's the final straw. Um, only from the point of view, everything that we were promised, of course, we haven't received. Um, you know, we were sold a pup. There's no doubt about well, well, it. Richard can I take think... this on. Tell, tell Richard that, because he thinks it's, go it's going as well as he, he'd hoped. No, actually, that's not what well, I said, in fairness. OK. I, I said this government, they haven't taken advantage of the opportunity. I'm All right. sorry. Really, go on, Nick. That, well, I, just to say, I think Richard is delusional, quite frankly, with what he's sort of saying here. I mean, the fact is, Brexit hasn't worked. We know it hasn't worked. We were promised by Boris Johnson that there would never, ever be any more sort of uh, reason to have sort of checks at customs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, because he's in it, fact, it's true, that, actually, Richard. I mean, the, th the thing is, Nick, in a way, Richard doesn't disagree with you, because I, I, I didn't mean to misrepresent it. He thinks it hasn't worked because it hasn't been implemented properly. But we were told, Richard, that by Boris Johnson, Johnson, if, if, if the EU gives you anything to fill out, just throw it in the bin and tell them to ring me. And it was ridiculous to say that. Well, actually, with proper leadership, it's perfectly reasonable to say that. We're actually literally at that with the moment. We don't need to change the rules on strawberries and vegetables coming from uh, the European but they Union. But the but our, uh, because the, the weak ministers are not telling the civil servants what day of the week it is. Sure. And that's but, what's irritating but, everybody. But, but no, but and, the point and, is... And, and that's why, you telling me, that is why, why are we paying £2.71 for tomatoes, um, for a quantity of tomatoes, and Germany, which you mentioned earlier, is paying £1.47. Hey, but you can get tomatoes from elsewhere in the world with free trade agreements. No, you no, can get them I from think, Africa I and go, elsewhere. I, but here's I, the point. This everybody, was in the Morrison's. And the cheapest, for some of the cheapest supermarkets, it, the price of tomatoes has doubled. Is that, is that Brexit, though? Come on. That's not, not Brexit, Yasmin. Yes, it, that, it is. That's it is global, part, we've had so global we have inflation, Yasmin. Yes, but here's the point. Here's Why the point. is Germany <laughs> able to have cheaper tomatoes than oh, us? Right. The point, that, the Sorry, point Nick, that all Remainers and Ramonas cannot accept, it's really difficult for them, is that Germany and the EU is doing worse economically. They're in recession. We're not. And why do you want to go I back to cheaper, some, to I somewhere want, that's I in recession? I want, cheapest, I want their cheap let, tomatoes. Let's take another call. Elaine in West Lothian. Do, do you think this food price thing is a sign that Brexit failed? I think it's absolutely ridiculous. A sign that f fruit and veg has went up is a sign that Brexit has failed. Brexit failed because we were tricked into voting for Boris Johnson, who we were told was going to get Brexit done, and as soon as they got him in, they got him out again. Right, so, so you think it's been torpedoed it by the people who followed him, do you? They didn't follow him. The, the, the people who came after Boris Johnson have killed Brexit, you think? No, no, no. Um, the, the people who got bo Boris in... In, yeah. We got him in to get a majority. 
they weren't interested in Brexit. They just wanted to do what they wanted and basically ruin the country. OK, that, thank you. Richard that... Tice, you have my vote, my man. Oh, yeah, so you're a Tice fan. OK, because this sounds like the plot of the Nadine Doris book, Elaine. Have you read that? I have. I thought you had, because she, she says there's a plot to, I suppose, a plot to know. destroy I Britain. I'm not saying it's a plot, but I believe that about the, the Brexit thing. OK, Elaine, thank you very much. Thank